Mix It With Mike plug-in of the week comes from Klanghelm Tens, uh, probably short for tension, as in spring tension, as in the AKG spring reverbs. Uh, there was a whole series of them going back from the early 1970s into the mid-80s. Uh, started out with, although this doesn't look anything like the original, uh, well, it does, the cabinet, right? Nice big cabinet, huge spring reverb. This is a not like your guitar amp kind of spring reverb. Uh, you know, which is some small thing in a box. This is actually much, much, much more sophisticated design. It was really designed by AKG to be an alternative to plate reverbs, which were quite big. And the original BX20 was, uh, I don't know, they describe it as the size of a refrigerator. I'm not sure if that's a small refrigerator, uh, but a pretty big unit. And, um, and uh, so what they did is they came out with a smaller version, the BX10, uh, and then they made a rack mount version, the BX5. All of these settings basically look the same, but the emulations come across differently. Uh, later on in the mid 80s, they came out with the BX25, which is the BX20 in a smaller case. Uh, and then the BX10, which was meant to be portable, right? So it was a smaller box, had a had actual handle on the top that you could carry it around. They did a BX15 which was uh, another version of that, so with some additional um, features. Most of these, they were all uh, actually uh, mono in, mono out, but we'll get into some of the routing configurations of what you have set up here. Um, and uh, this is a really great emulation. It, it gives you a lot of capabilities that you don't normally have with a true full spring reverb. Like, I think an HKG BX20 shortest reverb time is still well over two seconds, but this will give you a decay times to go down to 0.2 seconds. And that kind of gives you some, that coupled with the pre-delay can kind of give you some really cool echo kind of possibilities, sort of like a diffused echo or slap type of thing. And uh, lots of controls on that end. So let's just kind of go through it. Uh, all of the usual stuff with the presets, resizing, uh, the calibration, uh, which you can set here. I don't know why I switched it. I think it should be <laughs> minus 18. Uh, 18? All right. That's a good way to start it. There we go. How about I just do it that way manually? Not going to make that big of a difference. That would be just your I.O. calibration there. Uh, Pre-delay here, which can be set to musical timings. So you can uh, use it that way to create musical delays of the reverb. Um, as a metallic setting, the metallic setting basically in the full mode will give you a more metallic sound, which is a bit part of the spring reverb sound, or it will allow you to soften it by setting it to a low setting. Um, in this one, it, it defaults to all the way up, so you get something that's more akin to the original. Uh, there's a whoosh setting here. <laughs> whoosh is sort of the thrush of the reverb uh, when the sustain hits it. I believe that's sort of uh, one way I would describe it. Um, if you set it to the low setting, what it does is it minimizes that so you have like a more distinct attack to the reverb. Um, and if you uh, put it all the way up to high, it has like a smoother, softer type of characteristic to it. So uh, that's one option there with whoosh. Tension uh, is just the adjustment of the tension of the springs themselves. So the higher you make the tension, uh, it will sort of change the sustain. It'll be a, a bit less resonant uh, and, I guess, to some degree affect the reverb time as well. Uh, so you set it to low, they'll be looser, and uh, you'll get a warmer kind of sound from it, more or less. Uh, let's see, you got the decay time all the way up to 40 seconds. That's super long. Uh, got a high frequency and low frequency shelf here. Uh, it doesn't say in the documentation what the frequencies are, but you're basically bass trouble, more or less, give you a good adjustment. And then there's 120 hertz um, high pass filter, or uh, excuse me, yeah, high pass filter, excuse me, um, on there, which you can engage here. I believe it's, yeah, I believe it's 120. Um, and mix control down here, which you can lock. So if you're going through presets, you can lock in your wet dry control to whatever you want. Wide gives you a full stereo and it can go all the way down to mono. Uh, one other feature that's important here, I will obviously got the input and output levels so you can adjust according uh, accordingly there. Uh, sometimes this becomes really valuable in just uh, driving more level can will change the character of the sound of it engage the springs more. So if the level is too low, 
you may not get the full essence of the sound and that could be something to experiment with it might be nice to have like uh i don't believe there's a shortcut unless i missed it that um makes the input and output work against each other but maybe that's less important in a reverb generating situation like this where it would be 100 percent wet output the secondary section here uh, allows you to set the input to be input to be stereo otherwise it'll sum the input and that's what it's set up by default with the default settings um, so with the stereo input if the input signal is feeding the left hand side you'll only get left reverb um, whereas if it does this it'll feed um, uh, to both left and right so you won't have the discrete separation between the two although they will be different and then you have the stereo width control to sort of control that further. I'll leave this in stereo here. You select the model here, right? So as you go through, this would be the BX20, BX10, BX5, uh, BX25, and BX15 in order of uh, chronological order of creation. The tank routing, now this is pretty cool. So what they have is multiple tank emulations. So the tank would be what uh, holds the springs, right? Um, and... Obviously, you want it to be, you know, controlled in such a way that it's not going to be getting any artificial resonant energy from the environment. Usually, it would be in a separate space, not in your room, like not in your mix room, like in a separate room. They do that with plates as well, which will also pick up whatever sound is in that space. Um, but uh, you have A and B. So within, you have all of these five, which will give you different tonal characters, even with the same decay. And as you switch between them, none of the settings will change, which is great. So you get two different tonal characters there. You could do A and B, which puts A, tank A on the left and tank B on the right. Switch it around the opposite way, B to A. Uh, or A to B, now A plus B. Now this is not uh, A going into B. It actually splits the signal, so you have full stereo, uh, dry signal feeding into both um, uh, tank A and tank B in stereo, and then tank A left and tank B left merge together at the output, right? So they're running in parallel, not one into each other, not in series. Um, there's also a drive feature, and what the drive feature uh, will do is a preamp, right? So there are different preamps uh, for all of the five units. So they're all emulated here and you could select a position for them. Um, so in the signal flow, what that means if you go uh, pre-reverb, uh, pre which it is uh, by default, uh, the input signal, uh, if I'm remembering this correctly, <laughs> The input signal will come in uh, and go through the preamp, and then the preamp will affect both the dry signal and the wet-dry mix, as well as the reverb. Uh, Pre-dry allows the input signal uh, that goes to the mix to go through unaffected by the preamp. So you have two options there, and then you have a post-reverb, uh, which is after the EQ. So signal flow-wise, it would be input control, uh, you would have the reverb unit. Well, if the preamp is in there, you would have the preamp, then the reverb unit. Then you have the EQ section, which is post-reverb. Uh, and then, um, so the post-reverb would, would be after that, but before the mix control, and then post-mix control. And then you could just solo up the preamp if you just want to use the preamp for some form of saturation. So hopefully that made sense. And then you could shift the timbre uh, warmer or brighter. Okay, I'm not sure if that's just like a tilt EQ or something along those lines. Uh, and I guess you could turn the whole thing off. That's your master bypass. Um, at the bottom here is a whole a whole LFO section, a uh, modulation section. So three separate sections that can be set to run an, on the envelope. And you could have the envelope affect any feature up in the panel up there. So it will change them, bass, treble, width, mix, etc., all right, so you can have those form of controls uh, and then have it set an attack, set a, a decay time, how deep do you want the movement to be, and then it will modulate the parameter. You won't actually see the knobs moving or anything, um, but that's the basic of it. You can also trigger uh, pre, post, I guess that would be post reverb, or external sidechain. So it actually has an external key so you could feed something else in to kind of trigger it. So you have three separate modulation controls, and that can allow you to create all kinds of other crazy effects if you use the LFO. So this, it's kind of weird. When I first looked at this, I thought, 
this looks weird as like a separate LED. Shouldn't that be on? This actually shows you that it's being triggered. So this is just will light up when the signal is coming in and it's seeing it and triggering it. And if you uh, click over here, it just moves that level LED or triggering LED over to the other side. So you could actually see the movement. That's the basic idea of it. Uh, and then here you would just set a rate and a depth. You could set the rate to work on musical values. Um, you could set the shape, right? Everything from uh, sine wave, triangle, etc., square wave, random. Um, and just decide what it is that you want to modulate and have fun with it. I'm going to spend less time on this. Um, and focus on the primary sounds and settings. Let's actually go, um, I always start with a, a vocal, so I'm not going to do that here. Let's just go over and just get a simple snare drum because a simple snare drum uh, might actually give us a good idea of what that is. So I'll just move this over here right by the snare. So this is our setting here. Now I just have this sort of uh, uh, setup here. I can't even remember if I dialed it in, but let's have a listen. I got a little pre-delay here. Um, with a note value. Let's see what we got. So one thing I've noticed here is that, and it, it seems to change a bit with depending upon which one, is that the levels, uh, when these are split, tend to be a little bit off from each other. Uh, and as you kind of go through, so I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's, you know, if it's maybe input signal related, um, but that's just something to notice. Maybe that's something that they're working on now. So to me, when I switched this, at first I thought, oh, it's got a wider stereo spread than this, but I'm not sure that's actually the case. I think it's just leaning to one side. All right, so you could see how there's uh, all the tonal variation, right, that I can go through here. And, and then you could go through each one with the different tanks. So you see like all the possibilities and you see with some of them, I think that's kind of purposeful that it's offset because then you get different characteristic sounds from them. So let's just start with, with one of these here and just go through some of the settings. I have the pre-delay in here. That'll help to hear some of the different things that are going on. For example, here with the whoosh setting at low, I'm getting a more distinctive delay and I can soften that so that the onset of the reverb is less defined. Right, so that, that has like a little bit more of the fluttery effect you would expect from a spring. This has a smoother effect that's leaning much more towards what a plate reverb would sound like. And then this is cool because then you can get a nice balance between them. Um, the tension, right, again, uh, what this will do is it will uh, determine basically how 
taut or how tight the springs are calibrated. So this will change the character. All right, so that has almost a kickback to it. changes the tonal character but then again you get that kind of you could hear how it's like oh yeah that's what would happen if the springs were tighter it's not really changing the reverb time which i think is really cool then there's the metallic knob So this will give you a slightly brighter sound. I was trying to find a setting that would basically uh, show that off a little bit better. Sometimes it's it's more exaggerated, the difference here. But essentially, you can make it warmer sounding or a bit more metallic or brighter sounding. That's the basic idea there. Uh, the, having the controls here for, for reverb time going super short is something I really love, especially for like guitars and things like that, where I just sort of want to slap spring type of thing but I don't want a big long reverb attached to it All right it's not suited for this I'll have a guitar part which I'll show basically with that here let me actually bring this back up and then just just go over some of the other controls here quick and then we'll dive in uh, to some of the other settings Loads of ways to just sort of shape it right from there. The drive control, if we put this here, I'll just put this pre-reverb because I'm 100% I'm wet, so those two settings are not going to make a difference there, the top two. If I put it post reverb, you'll really hear the distortion. And then you could change the timbre of that brighter or warmer. Uh, based on whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, each of the different models there has a different tonal character, and you could actually audition them just by putting it in solo mode. Probably, probably better suited on the track itself because we're still hearing the dry signal, but if you get the basic idea of it. Um, that gives like a nice tonal coloration. So you have some controls there. When it's in the off position, this is basically disengaged. So there's no on off. This on off will turn off the whole plugin altogether. And then you have the LFO settings. So let's just go, let's go to uh, just do a guitar and uh, or two and just kind of show some other ways this can be used. <laughs> Thank you. 
So here I have like the everything tight, pre-delay, eighth note. This is kind of what I was talking about with the sort of slap thing, giving a little bit more of the metallic uh, character, uh, bringing, dialing into decay, kind of having just like a cool slap effect. <laughs> And then, and then you could just kind of play with it from there. But just like as a, just like a, a quick kind of thing, I just wanted to show off that particular thing, which is, you know, obviously it's mixed very loud because I just have it in solo. But that would be the primary way of, uh, of working with that. And then there's, um, you know, the vocal, which is always fun. Between these harsh realities, the wanna get caught up. I won't deny myself worth, but will deny you on the re-up Tell me is this happening, it seems you really run out of luck And the way you got me feeling, it ain't what it seems, it ain't what it seems Don't you point your energy with your lack of Sympathy Tell me how Can you walk free Your guilty ways Washed out on me Tell me how Can you walk free Your guilty ways Washed out on me me Stuck between these harsh realities Don't wanna get caught up I won't deny myself worth But will deny you on the real Tell me is this happening It seems you really run out of luck And the way you got me feeling It ain't what it seems It ain't what it seems Don't you point your energy With your lack of Sympathy Tell me how Can you walk free Your guilty ways Washed out on me Tell me how Can you walk free Your guilty ways Washed out on me Stuck between these harsh realities Don't wanna get caught up I won't deny myself worth, but will deny you on the real. Tell me, is this happening? It seems you really run out of luck. And the way you got me feeling, it ain't what it seems, it ain't what it seems. Don't you point your energy with your lack of. Sympathy Tell me how Can you walk free Your guilty ways Washed out on me Tell me how Right, and this, this like you got a sense like just dialing around real quick how you can quickly dial in a tone or character or make something unique just with the settings right on here. And it's really fast, very well designed, simple to kind of navigate, move around in. Um, this is not even getting into some of the effects that you can create with the modulation. I'm not particularly great at that, so uh, I'm not going to show it off. But you can have, you know, loads of things like the reverb time changing, you know, based on the envelope coming in or having it triggered so that 
you know, it performs certain things. And if you could have it basically doing tremolo and modulation effects, particularly with the tension there, you notice that it changes the pitch as you uh, change it, which makes sense, right? Well, if you're changing the tightness uh, of how the springs are tuned. Um, a super cool one, very flexible, lots of controls, great emulation, great sounding, um, and just a ton of options that you can really dig into. Uh, so uh, anyway, I called this up and, and uh, um, not expecting it to be as really great as it was. And I put it up in his, and within two minutes of listening to it, I thought this is a plugin of the week. And, uh, and so great one to add to the collection. If you're interested, check it out, download a demo, throw it on some stuff you're working on. I think you'll like it. All right, there you have it. Plugin of the week from Klang Elm. Tens is the name of the plugin.